Kyle Nelson. How are you, my friend? Doing great. It's great to be on your show. Thank you. Thanks for thanks for agreeing to do this. Um, this is the Spots of Love podcast. Uh, we talk to tons of fans, and now we're kind of getting into the world of talking to cast and crew members and other people that worked on this show. Um, and it's all just centered around the the purple guy that we love so much, or dinosaur that we love so much, um, and your experiences. So I said before we started recording, but I just want to say again, from a fan's perspective and for on behalf of Barney History fans, we're super appreciative of you taking the time out of your day to to join us here and have these conversations. So thank you. Well, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of this and to reminisce about and the greatness of our our purple friend Barney and and just all the things that it blessed me with throughout those experiences that I had. For sure. Um, the way that I usually always start this podcast, the first question that I ask is um, just what was your introduction to Barney? Can you just explain what got you into um, working within this franchise? Well, I, I never had any entertainment or theater type background mm -hmm. prior. I w had just graduated out of high school uh, in 1997 and attended uh, what we call a uh, little people of America convention. Right. We have them annually every summer. And the last day of convention, I was checking out of the hotel and a friend of mine named Jennifer Romano, who played baby bop on the stage show tour, yeah. um, had caught me uh, as in passing and said, Hey, we're auditioning for the role of Barney for our stage show tour. And I think you'd be great. Um, and so I, I knew of Barney at the time. I remember seeing the shows and when I was younger and, but I, I wasn't too keenly aware of all the different characters. Sure. And, and so, but I gave her my information, my phone number, <coughs> and I got a phone call about two days after the convention from uh, um, an assistant for Sloan Coleman. Her name's Lynn Corzine. Mm -hmm. And she had, called and they flew me down to Las Colinas yeah. and I auditioned with two other gentlemen from Canada and and I, I got the job I was going to go to college up in Minnesota wow and, and uh yeah my parents are like go do it go explore the world go and 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 it's, 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 this is uh one of those unique experiences that that you yeah and I have and sure, sure enough they were right and I kind of expanded from there, of course. So, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, one of my questions was going to be, had you ever done any kind of thing like this? But you said that you haven't. What was it like um, getting into this idea of being a costumed character um, and getting used to that whole idea the first time? Well, it, it definitely had its growing pains, but yeah. I think I was surrounded by a lot of amazing people, talented, professional people in the acting community, mm -hmm. uh, in dance, in theater, and just just trying to absorb everything from them, from their experiences, and just kind of, in essence, the just the nuances and st standards of what it and how how it looks like to be a professional on stage and. And yeah. so, yeah, I know I'm learning from Barry Pearl and, of course, all the other people that played the costume characters and uh, Michelle McCarl and then our, our choreographer, um, Penny Wilson. And she was a staple, kind of just like a um, um, she's kind of like an, a, 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 a key cog to who Barney yeah. was in terms of and how we did our dance numbers, just and going through all the different songs, and she was amazing. For sure, yeah. We hear a lot about a lot about Miss Penny. Um, it's a shame that we can't talk to her and ask her some of these questions yeah. as well. But through all of you, we get to kind of learn a little bit more each time we hear about her, how amazing she was, and the and the work that she did on Barney clearly uh, was something that it was truly great. Um, I think it did also play a key part into what made Barney. The character in the show that it was definitely um for you were you so you hadn't done any performing so you weren't even a dancer or anything like that when yeah. you came I, to, into that role huh i took a like one theater class in high school oh and, yeah. and it was fun but i i of course it was just an elective of sorts that i i took and 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I didn't really consider myself like an actor or pursuing to be an actor for sure when I was 18, 19 at the time. Yeah. You said that there was some growing pains that you, that you obviously experienced getting into being this costume character as a professional. What is it? The, what was the hardest thing do you think um, it was for you as you got into that character to, to do that tour? Uh, just building strength and stamina and just becoming one with the character. I and mean, I think that um, you, I guess, of course, when you're out on stage and you're, you're vulnerable to the elements. And so I think in the beginning, I was still adapting to my, I mean, stage presence um, and, of course, memorizing choreography, um, yeah. timing syllables with a spring hinge mouth and so that it looked as realistic as possible when I'm trying yeah. to lip sync dialogue and or music, uh, just um, spacing and timing when entering and exiting. Uh, but I think for most part, I am just uh, just acclimating myself in a costume where your vision is very limited, your peripheral is limited. Yeah. But but it was one of those things that over time. And you just, you become more accustomed, you, you become more comfortable in it and you build more strength and stamina. And that, that was at that point where I was like kind of meeting that turn and, and knowing like, I got this, like, of yeah. course I got, I'm, like the, the songs are ingrained in my head mm -hmm. and the choreographies become I'm more second nature. And that's, like it was at that point where like I was in love because yeah. like I, and I was going through everything that I needed to do and I was entertaining the crowd and like and that's where I could really focus on the people doing my 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 shtick for sure so. yeah um there actually there was a fan who asked this question in Barney History fans a couple of days ago uh, by the name of Jacob and uh I thought it would be cool to ask you directly. Um, we've heard from kind of Carrie and uh, David Joyner with how they got acclimated with the Barney costume, but we don't usually hear um, from the other dinos uh, what you guys had. So as you did the show, you were on tour and then you went to the series. Did you have some kind of a set routine that you found yourself to come up with to handle things like the heat and conditions of being inside that costume for long periods of time? Yeah. And we, I know we had what we call wranglers and people help assist us. And um, I, 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 they would provide Gatorade or water. Uh, yeah. that we would have a fan that we'd like for, for me, um, I'd just kind of lift up my, the head and it'd kind of fit right yeah. under. And, and obviously there's spacing since mm -hmm. mine was a three piece costume and Barney was a two piece costume. Sure. Um, so it, I mean, it definitely uh, allowed uh, itself for a little bit more ventilation. I know that um, that for Barney, I mean, it's a, a, a different a different means of operating the costume. Yeah. But but yeah, I mean, like be, like we we had it such to where I mean, on stage the stage show tour there were two people per character, mm -hmm. and that with that we. Um, we, whether we're playing part A or part B, um, and it was relatively equal I mean, to the timing that we'd be on, and and so like immediately when I'd get off, if I was playing part A, I I'd, I'd go sit on a, a box we call a crate, and yeah, and we just fan fan out, get our liquids, and just kind of let our blood pressure and kind of slow down. But, sure. but we knew that we'd have to kind of get ready. So we'd I mean, just we'd be amp <clears throat> amping up one another in what we call the dino pit, and listening to our music, um, yeah. or or at a, a point in time where we had the Wiggles as our intermission, we'd be listening to them while yeah. we were in the back in the dino pit, and and so yeah, it was quite entertaining. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, like you said, there was there was two of you on tour where you kind of switched out and things like that. Did, did you ever have a sense of feeling um, of like where you wanted to be on stage all the time? For me, like, I feel like 
I used to do Barney appearances for free. I had bought a costume, which I know is against the rules, but I did that as a, as a teenager. Um, <laughs> and there was no second person, but you enjoy it so much of seeing kids and people light up and you're performing that you just kind of always want to be out there. Did you ever have that experience where, um, yeah, you got, you share time with, with someone else, but where it's like, Oh man, I kind of want to just do the whole, the whole show. Cause you just enjoy it so much. Oh yeah. Like I, and we, <clears throat> and there were times where uh, we purposely had to do the whole sh show just as a, a way to and acquaint ourselves. If worst case oh. scenario, one of us got injured. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like there, like, like once, once I be, I, I felt like I became one with my character, mm -hmm. and especially when I started the TV production, yeah. I. I, I'm always hearing Patty Wirtz in my ear, and I, we got to such to the point that, like, to help kind of break time, we would we kind of do like our little comedic routines uh -huh. to to help keep to keep us occupied in, in between in between scenes. For sure, so. that's awesome. Um, is it true? Uh, there's also this website called uh, Barney Barney Wikia. Um, that's kind of a fan site ran. Um, kind of site but it has all facts and things that comes to the show and the series and things like that and there's a fact on there that says that you didn't officially meet patty words until you did the dino dancing tunes video like the first home video is that true that's true yeah wow how how was that finally being able to meet her after how long did you how long were you did you do the second leg of big surprise then I yeah I started on the second leg I yeah. I replaced a a gentleman named uh, Mike Hagen okay he, he played B J alongside Pat O'Connell the mm -hmm. first year of Barney's Big Surprise and then I came in and played alongside Pat O'Connell uh, that second year and then it was in when we were when I was doing the Barney's Musical Castle mm -hmm. I had the opportunity to fill in the role of BJ for that compilation video. Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty awesome. Cause I mean, we, I forget what city I was in, but I had to, I had to fly a late night type flight that was oh, yeah. like, it was delayed. And I, I got into Dallas really late, but wow. like I, 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 my adrenaline and stamina, like, like I'm doing this. This is, this is awesome. I'm excited. Yeah. And I got to the hotel and I had to call the studio to let them know I was here because they thought I admit like they thought my flight was canceled or that oh, yeah. like, that I didn't get in. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, no, I'm here. I'm like, I'm I'm ready. And and so it was one of those early morning call times, like six thirty, seven o'clock. Mm -hmm. And um I mean Penny Wilson was there to I mean, help run the choreography and do all the stage direction and yeah i got to meet uh, patty Wirtz and julie johnson and uh, bob west at that time yeah we were we were filming at the uh, one of the original studios in allen mm -hmm. and yeah near color dynamics so that was that was a pretty neat experience for sure um david joiner i think was the costume still at that at that moment yeah. on videos what was it like we know that you went on, you toured with Carrie for so long, and then you went on to the series with him. What was it like working with David Joyner's Barney, being able to work with him on on screen? It was great, and he he definitely is. A, I mean, he's a professional. He is a master at his craft. Um, I, I and I, I learned a lot from him in terms of just seeing just his gestures I, in in in. In relation to the character, mm -hmm. and I think it's unique to see each um, individual's take on when they hear I mean, certain vocal expressions and like yeah. and just kind of the, their own personal trademarks to how they emphasize the character through through I mean, those those uh, verbal um, mimics and 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 just their body language and yeah and he 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 made that c costume come alive yeah. just like josh and antoine and carrie and and so many 
else the, the remaining people that played Barney. For sure. Um, you playing BJ and becoming BJ for the series and things like that. Um, you came in after Jeff Brooks. Did you ever have a chance to meet Jeff Brooks or did you learn anything from him that allowed you to become this character as BJ? Yeah, I, I was I was fortunate enough to get to meet him when I started the stage show tour. I got to I, sit in on set um, and watch <coughs> watch them run the production and oh cool that's where I got to meet Jeff Ayers and David Joyner and, and Jeff Brooks and um, yeah I I really watching the TV show <coughs> when Jeff Brooks is on. And seeing how he <coughs> he would always be um, just high energy, a lot of the arm and yeah. moving back and forth, um, just kind of like the the side to side swaying. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I would I would like to mimic, I and mean, I initially would mi mimic a lot of that, but uh -huh. I think too um, over time and just how I, I kind of came in tune when listening to Patty play the character. I, I just kind of try to emulate my inner child yeah. in that. And so I mean, there's things that that I just just kind of became over time mm -hmm. uh, when when uh, kind of developing those little character gestures of sorts. For sure. Absolutely. You're one of my, uh, like I told you before we started, I'm a huge Barney fan um, and I do my own show, which was inspired heavily by Barney. So I watched, Bar I was born in 93. So I grew up with all of the series and videos and things like that. I used to stand in front of the TV. Um, even when you were on, uh, when you joined the series, the Barney big surprise videos, and I would mimic Barney's moves, the entire movies and TV uh, episodes. Um, so you were one of my, and I, I love everything about Barney, but you were one of my favorite people to play BJ. Um, yeah, thank you. Because yeah, for sure. Like, like you said, when it came to Barney, uh, David Joyner, Carrie Stinson, Antoine, all these people, they gave it was Barney, but they all gave their own kind of piece to it. And when you joined in as BJ and ultimately taken over, um, you clearly you it started to become more you got you found yourself in your own footing in it. Um, but you're one of my, my favorite iterations of BJ um, throughout the franchise. Uh, and so you can kind of see when you first started how you would Im uh, imitate a little bit of uh, kind of what Jeff Brooks has introduced and those guys on tour, but you can definitely see yourself start to come through um, at the longer you went. Um, and you just added small things that I don't think people who are just random watchers sometimes, you wouldn't notice them. But as fans, we notice small gestures that you guys used to do with the way that you would uh, use the costume. Um, but you're one of my favorite people to have ever stepped into that costume and become BJ. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Um, on, on tour, was there? Did you have a favorite place uh, that you that you toured to that was just above all the rest? Oh, uh, well, I think in a lot of coastal cities, I, I I love I love the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. Um, but I think, of course, and you go to New York City, and it, and at that time, and it was quite. Quite a magical, awe-inspiring because, mm -hmm. and uh, it was like late '90s, and I, I growing up with MTV, yeah. and i going down Times Square, and you're like, "Oh, that's where TRL is," and yep, <laughs> and I'm going to all the different stores, and I'm walking down Fifth Avenue, like, "Whoa!" And that look at that, and that store, and 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 seeing how crazy expensive clothing was, and relatively <laughs> speaking, back at that time. Um, but uh, yeah, I think New York City I mean, is I mean, one of those favorite places. And then, of course, to perform at Radio City I mean, was quite awesome in itself. Um, I, mean, I, I, love, I love Vancouver. I love Toronto. Um, I mean, California I mean, is, is beautiful. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I can't. I can't necessarily pick one, but I mean, if, if I was yeah. going to pick one, it'd probably be New York City. That's awesome. 
I haven't had a chance to get to New York yet. I I drove uh, semi trucks for a few years, so I've been to almost everywhere. New York is one of those places I I haven't had a chance to go yet. I really want to because I always hear great things about it. Yeah, um, I have to experience it one of these days. Um, starting with touring and then ending up on the series. How did you get the opportunity to get into doing the series full time coming from tour? What was that like? So, so we, I finished Barney's musical castle. This is like this. Uh, well, we, okay. So I, I, it was probably late spring, like May mm -hmm. or April or May. And I, I want to say we, we finished doing that second leg. I, I don't know if we finished like in Mexico City or if Mexico City was in between the two years that we we're doing it. But so I, I had um, moved back. My wife was on the stage show tour with me for one year, mm -hmm. uh, that first leg of Barney's Musical Castle. And then unfortunately, she couldn't do the, the second year because of neck complications. And so uh, she, we lived in around the Kansas City area, and I, we, I, I moved back. Um, we had an apartment in, in that Kansas City area, and I was working for my brother on a golf course. Uh, he was a superintendent of the golf course, and I helped do maintenance for him on the golf course. And uh, my, and of course, Carrie Stinson. Uh, became Barney on the TV show that same year. And, and so I had been corresponding with him uh, regarding like, Hey, I'm, I'm hearing word that I'm, there might be an opportunity for me to be on the TV production. And, and so, and I know, and he, he was and trying to uh, speak highly of me to, to the producers and the, the people that were, making those decisions at the time. And, yeah. and so, yeah, I, um, I got a phone call from Randy Dalton while I was working on the, they call it the Z track. It's kind uh -huh. of one of those, uh, lawnmowers that, that is hand handheld because like, yeah. of course I'm trying to reach the pedals was quite challenging, but yeah, I got off the Z track. I got on the phone with him and he had offered the position and, and, and it was just one of those things that through the years that I'd done the, t the stage show tour, I'm like, I couldn't pass it down. Oh, yeah. And, and, and this is something I love. And so my wife and I moved down to the Dallas area of that August of 2001. Nice. And, and uh, yeah, the rest was history after that. That's awesome. Um, when you joined Coming Off Tour, and this is a question I never got to ask Carrie because I never thought about it before, but coming off tour and going to a TV series, um, I know there was this thing called Barney Camp that the kids would be put through uh, to kind of get them introduced to the idea of the way that you guys would film the TV show and things like that. For people like you and Carrie who joined coming off tour and having to get used to this idea of being on television, even though you had done, um, you know, that home video previously, uh, did, did you guys go through any kind of a camp like that as well to get you used to the idea and the differences between stage show and television production? Um, a, a little bit. I mean, I know it's just, just kind of, and you, you're, you're kind of thrown into the mix mm -hmm. um, and I knew you become fam familiar as to how to I, pace yourself um, yeah. when it involves I mean, numerous takes uh, to get the right to get the right take. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and so I think the <coughs> the difference was just I mean, knowing that your day was of course much longer, and <coughs> and uh, you you just have to look at it in the sense of like okay, rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. All right, yeah. I get a good take. Oh, I lighting was off, or something happened. <coughs> Some something was in the way. So you just would get yourself into the understanding that, I in most cases you'd probably take at least three three takes, mm -hmm. 
of something that would I take the course of I mean, five five minutes maybe at the most, yeah. I mean, or like between two two and five minutes. And so, I mean, it, it, and it was a great day if like you could get through a take in two or three takes. But there are times oh, where yeah. like I mean, we 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 would potentially do like 10, 15 takes. Uh-huh. And you're like, and you're like, really? <laughs> yeah. You kind of get tired of it for sure. Yes. Um, Fred Holmes mentioned in the, in the Barney history group actually yesterday on that post asking about you guys in your costumes and dealing with the heat. He mentioned that um, you guys were troopers a lot of the time when it came to, especially him directing where he wanted multiple takes of things. But he said there was one moment uh, when filming land of make believe that you guys just headed for the trailer after, after so long. And he yeah. said, all right, well, I guess that's the end of the day for me. Got yeah, I'm, we're in Florida. Yeah. In Orlando. And of course, I mean, it's humid weather. Yeah. And so I, with minimal ventilate, ventilation in the costume, I, I, of course, we're doing, we're doing our darndest, but I walking over this bridge that yeah. was kind of cumbersome in itself. Mm-hmm. And 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 you have the song "Ants Go Marching," and in your head, and you you're going and like, "All right, let's do it again." And I remember basically Jeff Ayers led the way. He's like, "Nope, I'm heading. I'm heading back. I'm getting my cool down." Uh-huh. And I think I mean, I mean, Fred respected that, and he, yeah. he he knew that like we were going to give it our all, and that was one of those moments like we gave it our all, mm-hmm. and. And we weren't going to I mean, pursue another shot. And but I, I think I mean, in the end all be all, I mean, it was very well produced and I mean, oh yeah. Very well put together. And I, I, I know that with Fred I and mean, he he likes to take shots in various angles. Yeah. And and it, it definitely helps give perspective and fluidity mm-hmm. and I mean, when you're and when you're coming in and you're not taking like single shots here and then oh, here here's a forward facing shot and it, like right like he, would, he would intermix it and splice it and and that was one thing that i really enjoyed learning mm-hmm. and especially like from someone like him is the the craft of directing for sure a video or an episode because i mean there's i mean, you have to take it and in the lens of, of um, like, I mean, looking kind of up upright I mean, from mm-hmm. I mean, the, a certain angles because you have I mean, other scenery that is not being shown like, yeah. from from plain eyesight. And so, um, I think what I remember when I did uh, we did this uh, episode that was probably like a compilation of a video where Adam. Brown and uh, J- Jeff Ayers and myself, we were elves. We we're rapping oh, elves. Yeah. And so we're out of costume. Mm-hmm. And and I think one of the things that we were so accustomed to while in costume is like we could stare d- dead straight into the camera. And, yeah. and you wouldn't know any better because I mean, the eyes of BJ wouldn't be able to discern I mean, yeah. who he's really staring at other than that I mean, he's just in costume. Mm-hmm. But like me as myself, like I would, I would look out t- kind of towards the camera, and I remember them like, like don't look into the camera, <laughs> yeah. like, like don't look into the fourth wall. Yep. And and I was so I, it was one of those quick like okay okay, and so uh-huh. you know, like like of course in the back of my mind like don't look at the camera, don't look at the camera. Yeah. While while going through these motions, so like I, I and I was able to, I acclimate to that, but I think. Having it, having heard it from him, I mean, it was one of those moments where, like, okay, I get it for sure. Um, so, but yeah, yeah no, I mean, those are good times for sure. I was going to ask um, about that Christmas special or episode that you guys did. Um, what was it like for you to be on screen outside of the costume playing another character? Like, did did you enjoy? I know you said you guys had trouble struggling with the not looking at the camera, but aside from that just being a different character, not inside a costume character. How was that experience for you? Did you enjoy that moment? 
Oh yeah, I'm of course working alongside Adam and and Jeff. I I we we had a blast. I'm being able to act in character. I'm uh, Joe Phillips, who's our audio person. Yeah, that did the did the music and all and him and his team editing the music. Mm -hmm. um, I basically uh, auto tuned our voices. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, such so that I, it would be appealing to the audience. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I knew it was, it was a, a fun experience. I, I'm definitely one of those things that just, I was another new thing for me to build an awareness to I, for sure. I, what acting as myself would be like. And, mm -hmm. and it, I, it, it, I had provided other opportunities for me too. Outside Definitely. of that, um, being inside that costume for so many years, like you were, did, is there any thing now that you that you've experienced because, of, like, as far as like on your body, any type of wear and tear that you experienced from being in a costume like BJ? I know with Barney, uh, Carrie has talked about it before, um, and things like that. You know, that costume is so big and weighs so much, and you're falling or things like that. You experience things, um. BJ and those guys are a little bit lighter, but did you experience any kind of wear and tear that happens on your body with a costume like BJ? Yeah, I, I, I'm thankful. I in high school I I wrestled, and oh. so I, I, I feel that just being involved in sports and athletics, I helped me. I kind of initially get acquainted with wearing a costume, but it it, it took a whole nother level of conditioning and enhancing my cardiovascular um yeah. and and i think that was probably the the main thing is just being able to i mean, have enough stamina and energy to to be in the costume because like one person I mean, you can be strong mm -hmm. but if you don't have the cardio I yeah mean, and it's you're going to get winded very quickly and I, mean, I think i mean after having not worn the costume for quite some time mm -hmm. i I kind of miss it because I'm, that was in essence yeah. my means of going to the gym, and sure. and now I like I have to go to the gym if I if I if I want to stay in shape. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and I, 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 my knees. I growing up, I I skateboarded and snowboarded. Oh sure. So I there's a lot of impact doing doing those sports, um, but I. I mean, not not fortunately, knock on wood, nothing major. I mean, I, I, I as little people, we we always have to be cognizant of our weight, sure, and because we're we're prone to having like lower back issues and mm -hmm. and issues with our legs. Um, if if we get ourselves I mean, to a point where when we're considered overweight, but yeah, um, yeah, I I after not having filmed for a while, I, I'm much more cognizant of trying to eat, continue to eat healthy, yeah. stay active. And, and I get to do that um, working as a, a school teacher. I'm nice with, with, with students. They, they keep, they keep me physically active. Oh, for sure. Attending to them. <laughs> oh yeah. Kids will tire you out very quickly. So yes. yeah, they'll keep you busy. Um, I didn't. I didn't have this question before, but it just came to me. Being a school teacher, do do your students know, or do you share with them that you were BJ ever? Or what? Yeah. What, what age do you teach? Well, I've I've taught preschool okay. um, for a number of years. I, I teach special education. Nice. And okay. I, I'm currently teaching fifth and sixth grade students mm -hmm. uh, special education. Um, so I, to them, I many of them, I the, Barney is oblivious to them. Yeah, uh, but it's it's the teachers and my yeah. fellow coworkers, uh -huh. I, the younger ones that I definitely like, and cause me to reflect on the fact that I'm older now. And, oh, sure. Like, and, and so, <laughs> so they're like, "Oh, I I used to watch you." I'm like, "Oh, yeah, I'm great, old. thank you." And, yeah, like, but but um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot a lot of the teachers that will ask those questions of like, what was like this like? And what was that like? And, and, sure. and working with certain people and like, Oh yeah. And I, I just, I remember them as kids. Yeah. And, and that's the last thing I remember them as. So sure. <laughs> definitely. 
Um, going from touring and then on to the TV series, when when you put those two uh, next to each other, those two experiences, do you have a personal preference um, when it came to doing that? Did you like being on stage and touring and that kind of thing more? Or did you like the TV series more? Or is it kind of equal and just kind of in the middle? Um, I they're, they're, they're equal in their own right. I mean, they're all, I think a lot of it reflects on, I mean, for me, it plays on like, like what my home life is like, like at yeah. the time it worked out so well early on because I was single. I didn't have any children. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have any big priorities. Yeah. Um, and then, but being on the TV production, I, 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 I'm, I'm married and we're able to have my son and I'm able to do the TV production and attend to my son I'm from home. Um, yeah, I, but I mean, it, it's 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 one of it's it's a it's a hard it's like choosing like who's your favorite child, right? And, yeah, and, and you can't really pick one because I mean they both have their equal mm-hmm. pros and their equal cons. Definitely, but but I think I mean I mean being on stage, I mean and and it was it was essentially like a rock concert for kids, and, yeah, and and I was fueled by their energy. And and that and it was I and that would pre like one of those really exhilarating things that I I long for in a sense for when sure. being on the TV show, but then being on the TV show, um, I get to work directly with Patty Wirtz and yeah, we get a, it's like like we'll do little one offs in between mm-hmm. line scenes and stuff and and I th- those are things that I love too sure. so. I mean, it's yeah, it's a, it's a tough one to say. Definitely, I I understand that. Um, it's, yeah, because they they like I I agree with what you're saying. They both have their their own perks um and things that make them so special. Um, do you? This is a question that a fan wanted to know. <laughs> um, the the reason why I like doing this podcast uh like from a fan's perspective is because we ask questions that the other folks like if you work on the show you don't care about, but for some reason fans do. Um. We wanted to know though, do you do you know uh like if you're if the last suit for BJ still exists um at all? Yeah. Or do they or do they destroy him? Do you know that at all? I know um so like when the company got bought out at mm-hmm. the time I mean, we were owned by a holding company after we got sold after hit entertainment. Um sure was sold off and then at that time i i want to say my costume was used overseas Mm -hmm. and like they had i mean they had um uh, a big fan base overseas i think in the philippines and some other asian countries Mm -hmm. and i i think some of our costumes um, where they were, and of course they had to make modifications. Sure. Um, but I, I think they, I mean, since the new company had the license, they had ownership of, of all those, um, things. And definitely. And so, but I, I know for most part, I mean, like when I was on the stage show tour, they would, Daddy. they would destroy. I apologize. My daughter's here. No, that's okay. <laughs> uh, uh, they would, yeah, they would. They would basically break it apart, destroy it, because I, mean, with our sweat, um, and like just the the unique way in which they constructed the costume, for sure. I mean, a lot of that the foam and stuff would start disintegrating and breaking apart, and they just, yeah, they I, I, they would they would destroy them. But I, yeah, okay, I'll get you grapes. <laughs> so cool. But yeah, yeah, it was one of those. Yeah, I, I, it's it, it's a mystery. Yeah, but I, of what I recall, I I remember in conversation with other other former coworkers that I think they they moved a lot of those costumes overseas when they would do uh, other other uh, shows. That's so other interesting. With, with that. Hi, hi. This is my daughter Emery. <laughs> hi, Emery. <laughs> Say hi. <laughs> 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 like I need grapes right now. <laughs> um, that's no, that's really interesting. Uh, we always wonder that because we know 
we from being fans we knew that they would destroy the costumes because they would break down or just for licensing so people wouldn't get their hands on them um mm -hmm. and we thought you know with barney that they had destroyed that one and then it came out like two years ago or three years ago carrie got to wear it again for uh cptv's 50th anniversary or something like that and so we just wondered if they kept those costumes or not so that's just an interesting question to ask yeah. um do you why did why did you uh leave the show um like early like in the last couple videos uh gerard harris took over as bj yeah for those clip shows um did why 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 wasn't Cal kyle nelson continuing as bj in those videos i well i so i i had i had started so i i had worked i'd worked part-time um at uh uh, Lowe's Home Improvement Store, and oh. I also worked part time in my son's after school program mm -hmm. at uh, Kids Are Kids, and um, so when I started working in that, uh, I, I started realizing I mean, Bar Barney was kind of at a tail end, and I think everyone had had an awareness that I mean, I mean this is in inevitably going to to end here soon. Yeah, and. I I just had to make a decision at that time, like I, like I need to start thinking about I mean, what is my next step, mm -hmm. and I I started taking night classes um, when I was filming in two thousand nine, mm -hmm. I think yeah, and and so um, I I started taking night classes that the fall it was the fall of two thousand nine. And and that spring, I that that spring I started taking classes full time, like like a, a full load, and and I would then work in my son's after school program, and then I'd go from there um, to working evenings at Lowe's, wow. and 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 so I, I just um, I, I just continued, and then at 2010 came around. Uh, that fall of 2010, they were wanting to do videos, and and I I I just really had to decide for myself. I mean, like I this I I still love it, but I I I needed to get I needed to get my degree. Sure. And and that was a promise I made for my mom. She had yeah. passed away from cancer, and and I told my mom before she passed away, I'm like, I promise you, I'm going to get my degree, mm -hmm. and um, I I stuck to that game plan. And it was one of those things where I just I had to tell them I'm sorry, but I, I need to I need to continue this. And I'm thankful that Jared was able to fill in that role because he's an amazing, amazing actor and, oh, yeah. and he like he has got dance moves for days. He does. And, yeah. and so yeah, I mean like if there was anyone that was going to fill that role, it was him. For and, sure. And I'm I was thankful that he did that and and it was neat when, because when I was I mean, doing school, I mean, I would go pick him up, and I mean, we we'd hang out and have fun. Yeah. And my son um, Eli, he was he was in uh, kindergarten at the time, mm -hmm. and so uh, yeah, I and mean, Jared and him, they were best buds. That's and awesome. So, yeah, I mean, it was it was all good. It was yeah. it, it was all a good transition. Awesome. Yeah, Jer Jared was awesome. I, you know, I love Adam Brown and, you know, the other character, the other people who portrayed characters on the show. But when Jared gave life to Riff, he, oh, yeah. you, you could really shoot through. Um, I, you know, there's kind of a, a um, disagreement in the fan community and some of the cast and crew with the Riff character in that. But Jared really brought Riff to life on a whole new level. And so for me, I watched, I never grew out of the show. I wanted those those kids i watched it all the way until it ended um even as a high school kid watching it um when i got home but it was strange because you could see like little elements of riff even though he was in the bj body yes <laughs> in those videos but yeah he he was a he was another great performer like the rest of you who really uh you know without him adding life to those characters you wouldn't get the same kind of experience so uh yeah he's definitely he's definitely an amazing uh performer as well yeah um, Real quick, just uh, in general, what was it like for you, or was it hard going back to um, 
a quote unquote regular job after leaving a show like Barney for so long? Um, it it wasn't it wasn't too difficult. It was just like I, of course, I'd have those moments that like I missed. I oh, yeah. entertaining. I missed being with with those people with I mean, mm-hmm. the people I'd been with. I and mean, for me on the TV production of about nine years. Yeah. Um, and so it, I, 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 I miss it, but yeah, at the same time, I love being a teacher. Yeah. Um, I, I, and it's, I, 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 I don't know. I, well, I can say I do entertain that, my students yeah. I, in, in various methods, but, um, I, 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 I get to work with students and I, I, I get to I mean, make an impact on their lives and, and in many cases, I learn from my students. For sure. Um, and so, yeah, and it's, I mean, it, it definitely was a good transition in the sense of where I came from and yeah. working with Barney and with an, an emphasis on entertaining kids to helping teach kids. Yeah. Yeah. In a sense, it's pretty, it's, you're still kind of doing the same job. Um, a show like Barney that educated kids, um, for me, Daycare providers and teachers are the most important people I think we have in life um, because they you spend the growing years of your life in either a daycare or a school. And those people who take on that 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 position of being someone who teaches you um, and like you said, you still learn from them, but you're also providing them with the skills that they need to be successful. Um, I think those are the most important people. And then a person like yourself who gets to do that but also did Barney for so long and teaching kids through that way. Um, You're, I don't want to say that it's luck, but you, you're, you're kind of, you get this special opportunity to be on both ends of that. um, But still being an educator. Uh, Yeah. I have so much respect for that. Well, thank you. Thank you. And there's, there's a lot of parallels. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that Barney, I mean, really um, a lot of the people that uh, were in that position of, identifying what is developmentally appropriate yeah. uh, for for children and in that age range of like an infant to like five years old or so sure um they they really um uh, to that um uh, very um intentionally and yeah. and uh that and i think that's one thing that made allowed uh, parents to really appreciate barney mm-hmm. because and and you and in the entertainment business, and you can take a character and really skew kind of the yeah the and the the premise of like what the character represents and mm-hmm. and um i and I remember i I was doing a pilot for uh, a show that w- was going to be called um, uh, Harry the Cat in the kitchen mm-hmm. and and um some of the people on there. Uh, like it was uh, associate producers of Barney that were uh, kind of working this pilot series, oh, and cool. we did we did one little pilot show, and I, I just remember like someone um, was taking something kind of out of context, but in an, in an effort to I mean, be silly, yeah. And and one of I remember one of our producers like no that I mean, that has no place here, for and, sure, and. I'm reflecting on it. I really appreciate that she, she did that just because, um, and it like, it was one of those things like when, when you're in the confines of like what Bar- Barney represented and yeah. we, we really tried to stay true to that. And definitely, and it just is kind of like a mindset per se. For sure. Yeah. Um, Going back to the costume really quick, when you came in, you joined for season, for series seven and eight, they changed the costume um, a little bit and they yeah. gave you this trigger mechanism for the mouth. How was it working? Was it hard to work with that? Um, how was, how, what was that experience like having to, did you, I don't know if you used the trigger yourself or if it was controlled by someone else, but what was that experience like using the trigger mechanism versus just the, the bobbing of the head? It, it was a challenge. It was, ex- yeah, and it was extremely challenging at, at first because um, I know um, Jocelyn Stevenson, who, who, who came in as one of the, I guess, like a creative producer, 
I, I, I forget exactly what her role was, but I, she came from kind of the puppeteering world with Jim Henson. Sure. And I know that she had a great deal of emphasis in wanting to make I mean, the just how how we vocalized and just the t the timing of our mouths mm -hmm. I mean, to to be precise almost just yeah. like a, what a puppeteer would do and and I respected that I think that I mean there I mean there's there's a time of which I like I wanted to I wanted to master that craft mm -hmm. but in doing so it really it, it limited kind of my thought process of like allowing my body to be fluid sure. while at the same time I'm, I'm manipulating gravity with yeah. a spring hinge mouth. And, and, and I, and, and that was something I prided myself on was trying sure. not, not to make the mouth just like continually bob. Like, mm -hmm. like I, I would intentionally direct my head so that gravity wasn't causing the mouth to move, but I, I would be moving the mouth. But so then, so uh, I first started with like it was basically like a, a bike cable. Oh. And the bike cable was connected to um, this trigger mechanism. And depending upon how I had my hand straight or bent, yeah. I, I would manipulate the tension mm -hmm. of of that. And so I it was it was tricky because there would be times where like like my head was I turned and my arm was bent and like I, I was struggling to yeah. get enough tension to cause the mouth to move. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and that, I, 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 I forget how long that lasted, like, I, I, like two or three episodes that I did, mm -hmm. uh, maybe less than that. And then, and then we went to what we called a servo. And it was a, basically a feed, like a, a wireless feed to a device that I had connected inside my tail. Like it was, it was a battery in the servo pack, and that then connected to the cable line that would go through my like behind me, through my back, sure. up into into the um, the head, and so I all that would then be centered on the timing of when Patty would be speaking. Oh, okay. <laughs> and since there would be there would be a delay, there'd be latency. I from the feed, the wireless feed from where sh she was in her booth yeah. and to coming to me, I'm, it'd be like watching one of those I'm, I'm bad I'm Japanimation type English yeah. films that like, like you, you would start hearing the talking first and then yep. my mouth would start moving. And so yeah. I'm, it, it, it was almost comical. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and so I think they, they inevitably I'm, came to the conclusion like, and this is costing a lot of time mm -hmm. and I mean, it, and it cost and it costed a lot and we just reverted back to sure. what we were doing before and like, yeah and so and i and i i think that in in some ways like it, it was a good experience because like i it was kind of in in essence trying to pay respect to i mean, the craft of puppeteering for sure that, like when you're in full body and like I couldn't like I know um, Bear in the Big Blue House mm -hmm. and his arm and like he can detect like his arm is detached like yeah. one of his arms and so he's he's like up here yeah um, talking with this yeah while he's able to manipulate this arm so right. and it's obviously I mean, easier to manipulate mm -hmm. and I mean, equal out I. Mean, someone speaking at the same time and mimicking that as opposed to trying to get a frequency from a right. wireless feed. So yeah, big birds built that same way. And yeah. in the first six home videos for Barney, when it was backyard gang, he was built that way as well, where they, David Voss yeah. used his hand and that kind of thing. Um, but the guy, the way that you guys ended up doing it, um, they say that it was David Joyner. I don't know if it was him who, who came up with the idea for the, the bite bar and Barney and the, the way that you guys uh, manipulated baby Bop and BJ and then eventually riff. Those are all other forms of puppeteering that people you don't use often because I think Barney was one of the only people who really used that method. Um, but it still takes skill. Uh, 
for that that mechanism, it was interesting to see happen because Baby Bops didn't work well at all. Like if you watch those episodes in those first two seasons, it was only seven and eight that yeah. they used it. Her mouth would barely move. Yeah, um, it was much better, and and you can see uh, as you say, and that's why I said you're one of my favorites too. As the years went on, um, going back to that, the the regular method, especially with you, you you really did a great job of when BJ wasn't talking, his mouth was closed, and you, you it really did take precision from your end on doing that. But it works so much better than than that mechanism. Um, so yeah, that's why I wanted to ask how how hard was it to have to use that, especially when you're used to the the bobbing of the head method and then trying something completely new and kind of out of the park. Uh, it definitely works better going back to the the method that they had before. But it is kind of fun to try new things too, yeah. which you you can't fault uh, at all for that. Um, real quick, do you have a favorite? And I know it's hard. It's like when I asked you about the tour and the series, but is there a favorite video or episode um, or song that you liked, that that you loved the most to film or perform. Um, well, I, I think like doing <clears throat> Barney's Musical Castle. Uh, uh, Penny Wilson gave me some kind of freedom mm -hmm. uh, during during my kind of one main dance number, uh, where I was uh, doing a dance with these um, a couple of our dancers who had. Two adjoining costume oh, yeah. uh, characters, where they had the, the like these pipes, so that when their movements would mimic the the, the two mannequins' movements. Yeah. Um, and Penny allowed me to I kind of craft up my own little dance number mm -hmm. um, in in that that uh, kind of interlude. Um, and so I, that's kind of one one experience that I. I reflect on that. I, I really liked um, any opportunities like in film or videos that I've been able to do to like kind of do air guitar, to, well, not air guitar, but like pretend I'm playing a guitar yeah. or, or I mean, play the drums. I mean, uh, like when Riff character came in, it was always like this running joke. It's like Riff's, Riff stealing your thunder. Yes. Because <laughs> like we, we would we'd comment on how, like riff, like riff was just this musical genius, mm -hmm. and, and then like I had to play it to the point of like, yeah, like I don't really know, I don't know music like you do. I'm like, heck yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> what are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> yeah. So I, I, but like, yeah, any opportunity that I would be able to, kind of like, bring out an element of things that I like, I like, I and mean, I like playing percussion, yeah. and, or or um, I when I was able to um, have rollerblades on and yeah. rollerblade and costume that, I know that kind of presented a new element to I, I'm being in costume and being able to do something like that. But, For sure. But um, yeah, there's so many, it's, it's, it's hard to tell. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned the, the knight and uh, shining armor dance from the musical castle and man, you killed it in, in that. And that thing, because that's one of the only times in Barney, like I told you, I would mimic the show and I would always be Barney. But that's one of the only videos that when it was BJ's moment to shine, I would then start imitating the <laughs> whole like the running man and all those things that you did with uh, BJ. So, yeah, dude, man, you, you really killed it on that on that Thank dance you. for sure. Um, yeah, for sure. Uh, random question here. Is there anything that you wanted to do as BJ or that maybe... Um, the writers or producers or directors wanted you to do as BJ that didn't end up happening for whatever reason, anything kind of fun that you wanted to do? Well, I know that they wanted to do kind of a spinoff show uh -huh. for BJ and with kind of emulating his whole Captain Pickles. Um, oh, really? Um, kind of mantra. Um, yeah. Uh, that, but um, yeah, that obviously never came to fruition, but I mean, I mean, nothing really. I mean, outside of I mean, being able to do like any kind of like um, adventurous type thing, like something that would be out of the realm of what you would traditionally think a person in costume could do. Yeah. I mean, and we we did we did try to, I mean, in in various circumstances, try to push that envelope, but mm -hmm. of, of course they, I mean, they they really 
brought us back to perspective. Like, like who is our target? Who's our target audience? Yeah. And like, oh yeah, yeah. So like, <laughs> yeah. I guess you're right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, for that 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 BJ spinoff, we there there was one in the early years that they wanted to do an animated spinoff of him and, with a rock band. What this one was, with that, did it ever get to the point of talks of being live action or animation, or uh, was it just kind of an idea that just kind of trickled out? Uh, I, I think it was just I, an idea that mm -hmm. I mean, that I, mean, I I was obvious I wasn't like in those meetings. Right. It was one of those things that I remember. The directors saying, "Hey, I mean, just so you know, I mean, at this point in time, like we were in serious discussions of of doing a spinoff for your character. I'm like, oh man, that would have been cool. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, seriously. Um, one more question, then I'll have you show the Barney item that you brought, and then we'll wrap this up for you. Um, as you know now, or, or I, I I assume that you know, um, Mattel is now rebooting, um." this character Barney and we have Barney's world, this animated show that's coming out. What are your thoughts? Um, or do you remember what your thoughts were when you found out about this animated series? Um, I mean, initially I, I, I was just very curious as to like, how, how are they going to portray the character? Mm -hmm. Um, and like, are they going to try and stay true to, I mean, much of what Barney emulated I mean, originally, but but kind of seeing more to I and mean, how I and mean, a lot of things change, um, and I could see to whoever the the writers are and the people that are making those executive decisions are I mean they're I mean, I'm I'm sure they're doing a lot of studies with kids yeah. and and. Like seeing what wh where do kids' interests lie, and and I know that I mean there's always been that discussion of like I mean <clears throat> Barney I mean, Barney emulates something just that is too perfect that it's not real world and yeah. like well that it, and it's not so much a means to like mimic I mean, I mean human nature mm -hmm. but to provide something that is pure in nature that will always be there for for kids that like barney's I mean, at that time barney was never going to shift or change right. or give an impression of like 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 oh hey i fo i fooled you kind of yeah. like thing um yeah and he, he barney was always about love mm -hmm. um i know that like when um that documentary of like i love you you hate me came out yeah uh, it and the narrative to that, I mean, I mean, it was as well put together, but in context to like the people that were in it, like, like for my, I mean, obviously we all have our own personal stories and our, sure. and our own personal experiences, but I think generally, I mean, everyone knew that, that were involved, that I'm, mean, I mean, we we always stuck to the premise that I mean this was a, this was purely about love. This is I, I mean, there's there's so many elements and experiences that I was able to have going to I mean, hospitals or be a part of a Make a Wish. Yeah, that really allowed you to I and mean, allowed me to have a, a new perspective. That mm -hmm. like this isn't simply a job. I mean, this is almost like a calling. Yeah, like, like I like this like. I know, like, divinely that, th like, Barney is something that is good. For and sure. uh, I mean, I mean, out of the context of, like, religion, I mean, ba uh, Barney, B Barney is uh, 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 I mean, someone, uh, a character that demonstrates peace, demonstrates yeah. all those elements that you'd want. And I think that, that um, I mean, p people who couldn't, obviously relate to that in a sense and, and and people who either didn't have children per se i would look at them like this like this is not this is just too cookie cutter like this is just not reality i'm like right. yeah it's you're right in, in in many points but like we're sticking to what we're doing yeah. and we're not going to change it we're not going to change from that and for sure and so i i think that I'm kind of getting off a tangent, but now you're good. But but um, 
but, but I think that I, I that that definitely helped and gave gave me I, a, a good understanding of what I did was good mm -hmm. and good for the general public and for sure. But like go, go, going back to your question about I, the new the new show, um, I, I I'm excited that they're reviving Barney and and I know that in in many ways you have to. You you have to evolve. You have to to change with the times in terms of like, I and how how are you going to build upon ratings? I mean, sure. I mean, obviously, generation like new generations have new perspective on things, and mm -hmm. but I but I hope that I mean, that they they don't put Barney in in a light of of um, I mean, d demonstrating. Uh, negative and positive opinions that and they always try and keep it positive yeah right? and, and and embrace diversity bring forth awareness i mean in 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 a manner that is is pleasing so for sure i yeah i completely agree um i'm trying to remain optimistic because i've always said over the years kids today need barney um and this is their opportunity granted he looks completely different than what we've been used to this is an opportunity for kids of today to have their version of Barney. As long as they stick to who the character is and his core, um, I think that's the... I'm remaining optimistic for that. So we'll see what happens. But I agree with you. You know, that was one of the negative sides that Barney got was because it was always a positive thing. Um, and I have two arguments with that because I say, for one, well, for young kids, the world is already full of negativity. What's 30 minutes or 45 minutes of just nothing but love and positivity um, out throughout their day. I don't see anything wrong with that. Also, Barney is a make-believe character who's brought to life by the imagination of children, All Barney and the other dinosaurs. So, of course, to me, Barney is the creation of what a child would want. Um, he's fun. He's colorful. He sings songs. He teaches you. But he loves you, and he appreciates you, and he accepts you for who you are. And these are things that... Um, if this character is meant to come to life by the kids and their imagination, these are obviously the kind of elements and characteristics that that character would have. Mm. And it's so strange that um, adults don't see that very obvious <laughs> idea of this is a character brought to life by a child's imagination. So it of course would not appeal to you on the level of what an adult would want something to be appealed to. It's going to match exactly with what that kid would dream or imagine it to be. Um, so I always, I always argue with people about that. Cause it's like, it's, it seems so obvious to, to us because we're fans or you, you worked on the show, but it's just one of those things where it's like, it's so strange that they can't pick up on that very obvious message. Um, but I'm with you. I hope that that new show, granted it's animation. It's cheaper to do that. Um, that's the new thing, but which ironically thinking about it back in, back in the day in the early nineties, like, Mm -hmm. Animation was more expensive than yeah. live action, exactly. and now now it's like vice it's versa. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But as I think, if they keep the core of Barney and who he is, it can work in whether it's live action or animation. So we just have to cross our fingers and see. Um, yeah. One more question about the Barney's reboot here, really quick. They, I don't know if you've seen, and, I, and maybe you have. They've decided, or at least in the the release that Mattel made. They're changing BJ's name to Billy. Yeah. Do you have a, do you have fans have tons of opinions about it? Um, do you being one of the people who brought BJ, the character to life, do you have an opinion on the name change? I mean, honestly, I, mean, it's, it's, I find that in, in a lot of ways, it's like, it's bringing attention to something that never really needed to bring attention to. Yeah. I mean, Yes, and you could put it out of context, but at the same time, I mean, people are, are always going to identify that character as BJ. Yeah, and 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 I, I like you. I mean, I find, I mean, when you're changing a name, I mean, granted, you have a new generation of kids, so they're not going to really know much different mm -hmm. unless you like educate them I'm like this is the old barney and oh hey right. why is that character named bj like mm -hmm. and, well <laughs> it's like you, you you're then having to 
potentially bring up a whole different story. Yeah. Right? But, but, um, but I think, I think, I think they pay homage to the initials of, I, I forget exactly what family member to Cheryl Leach. It yeah. is, but I think his Her father, I believe it was. Yeah. But I believe his name is Billy. Yes. And, and, and so they're, they're just kind of paying homage to that mm -hmm. as opposed to his initials. Yeah. So. That's what, as fans, that's what we hope. Um, yeah. Where fans are a little difficult. So we, we hope that that's what it was. But then there's also part of us where we go, I mean, how much of Ma does Mattel and those guys actually know the history of like Barney and Cheryl's family and that kind of thing um, versus it just being because of what those initials are? It reminds me, it brings me back to what you said earlier during that pilot where people want to take certain things out of a context of what they're meant to be. And mm -hmm. it's like, like you said, there's no kid thinking yeah. those kind of things that an adult would think exactly uh, to where exactly. you have to do that. But um, I just wanted to, to get your perspective on it and being someone who, yeah. who brought BJ to life, what you thought about that. Before we finish up here, uh, Kyle, what we always do on this show is we uh, have our guests bring on a Barney item. Um, or, or a couple items, whatever it is, that they personally hold near and dear to them. Um, and we have you share it here. So can you show us whatever yeah. items you have and then just explain why it is those items that you chose? Well, I, I, the, the big item I have here, it's a, it's a letter that Penny Wilson wrote to my parents. Wow. So I, I was I'm 19 at the time. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, I'm... I'm I, as opposed to going to like a, a traditional secondary university, I mean, it was for me, it was Barney University, yeah. And so, Penny, I mean, she was kind of like my my second mom. And yeah. and the, the cool thing, um, is at the beginning of each tour, she would give every cast member a, an actual penny. Wow. I, and and she would, I mean, it was just that it was a tradition and mm -hmm. and she she I mean, aside from just her amazing talent and and her craft and the art of dance um she just had a great imagination she she i mean, she was one who like like when you're around her like you believe barney like you oh yeah like you truly believe barney and and so, I mean, she would give you this penny, and 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 just tell you like, I and mean, just give you good vibes, good, I and mean, good words of encouragement, and and it just it's it stuck with you. And like, I kept that penny with me in my little address book, yeah, um, type thing, and I, I still have it today. And but I'm mean, coming across this, I and mean, I and I, I mean, I'm thankful that I have it, and. Mm -hmm. I and mean, that I can re reflect on, I and mean, I mean, Miss Penny, um, I mean, who I, I believe I mean, just continues to live on today. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that with us, Kyle. Um, the last question that I always ask before we end the podcast here um, is why why Barney? Why do you think Barney is so important? Why did you decide to last with a character like Barney and the characters that came along with him? For as long as you did, uh, it's just I'm kind of going back to the idea that I I, I got this job, not I mean, obviously realizing the impact that it was going to make on my life, mm -hmm. and as I became more and more aware of what Barney represented, I I truly felt I mean, kind of in the end all be all it was a calling it was something I was meant to do, and that. Um, I mean, through those experiences, the people I met and I mean, who I still am friends with today mm -hmm. I mean, are, are near and dear to me because I mean, we experienced those things together. Yeah. And um, many of them I and mean, I mean, saw me um, as a, I mean, a single 19 year old I and mean, grow up um, mm -hmm. at, I mean, as an adult I and mean, got married. I mean, were present at my wedding. Um, I saw my son get born. Yeah. Um, I and mean, just I and mean, all those I and mean, that they're they're a part of your family. They're I'm like how you were saying before, I mean, as I mean, teachers and caregivers, I and mean, 
they're I mean, they're they're with these kids I and mean, mm-hmm. the majority of the time, and so and you you approach it in the in the sense of like, and you you care for them no different than if they were your ch- own child. For sure. And and so I like I cared for the character I played as though like he was like he was me. Like I need like I need to stay true to this and yeah. and a lot of those people I worked with um, who emulated the craft so well um i i'm grateful for their their mentoring teaching me and and just kind of guiding me along the way and allowing me to and build my own my own craft and and uh i yeah i mean that's things of which i will always stick with me that's awesome that that's wonderful Um, thank you again, Kyle, for taking the time. We've gone over the hour that I wanted to, but I appreciate you, uh, for jumping on here, uh, for sharing your experiences with us. Um, I do want to say from a fan's perspective, um, on behalf of Barney history fans and, and all of those that we do appreciate you so much. Um, you did so much for us and our lives, um, being a part of that show, uh, that for some of us, like me doing my show and things like that, I would not have done if I didn't have, um, Barney and these other characters impact me the way that you guys did. And so I want to say thank you for doing that. You're, you're really appreciated. And I hope you, you know that there's a lot of people out there who, who really appreciate you and you've done something special for them. So thank you for that. Well, my pleasure. I'm honored. And, and I, I thank you for I mean, continuing to kind of pay homage and, and just have that, that level of that nostalgia to the things that you're, emulating in, in your show yep. and um and and yet yeah, and making it your own too which is awesome and so yeah keep it going I, I i think it's awesome i appreciate that thank you so much um and for everyone here in barney history fans i hope that you enjoyed this episode uh you can you know where to find it if you want to be on the podcast www.barneyhistoryfans.com put your name on that google form And who knows, maybe one day we'll see you here in your spot of love. Take care.